Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. If you want to know why I purchased a truck camper and go on a quick tour, stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel everybody. If you saw my video from a few weeks ago, you know I went on a 60 hour road trip in order to pick up this Northern Light truck camper. A lot of you asked why I purchased a truck camper when I have the Airstream Base Camp and why I drove 60 hours for this specific unit. So I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of it because there's not much to show and also give you some of those reasons as to why I purchased this. So before we jump into why this specific unit, let's talk about why I started shopping for a truck camper. I am not getting rid of the Airstream Base Camp at this point. I am planning on keeping both the truck camper and the base camp. The base camp feels like home. I absolutely love camping out of that and it has a lot of luxuries. This truck camper does not. So if I'm going out for a much longer period of time, the base camp is going to be a lot more comfortable than the truck camper. But why did I start looking for a truck camper? Over the past couple years, I've noticed that I'm spending a lot more time here at Michael's house. Whereas before I was truly full time in the base camp because I had nowhere else to stay. Now I do come and stay at Michael's house for several weeks to a couple months at a time. Having a centralized location such as his house does drastically change my method of travel. When you live truly full time in an RV, you can be a lot more flexible with your route. So for example, if you want to be in Arizona and the southern states in the winter and then slowly work your way up through California into the Pacific Northwest in the summer and fall months, you can take all year to do that. And then you can take just a few days to travel, take a couple weeks off, travel a little bit more, and it really is a very relaxing, amazing way to travel. But by coming back here and visiting Michael quite often, it gives me a hub that I'm doing trips in and out of. That means I'm doing a lot more miles and I have a lot more driving than I used to. Towing the base camp, I do about 65 miles an hour max and that's it. So if you're on some of these roads out here in the West where the speed limit is 80 miles an hour and you've got 20 hours to go, doing 65 adds on a lot of time to the trip. So I started looking at truck campers as a way to have a rig that would go further and faster for when I wanna do those trips that are much further away from Colorado. Also after four-ish, I think it's been four years of towing the base camp, I can say I am getting a little tired of towing. Every time you tow, there are extra things to think about. You've got all the wheel and towing maintenance. You've got to worry about the tire pressure, the connections, checking all of that. You're unhitching, hitching back up. And it's not that difficult, but after four years, it just gets a little tiring. So I am ready to try to have a self-contained unit, which came down to either a truck camper or a van. I am also looking at buying my own cabin at some point, if I can ever find one in this crazy market. So I do want to have a separate truck. So when I'm at my cabin, I can have a vehicle and not be driving around in a built out van. So for me, the truck camper made the most sense. The other really big reason for the truck camper is over the last few years, boondocking spots have become really popular. And the easy-ish to get to ones are usually pretty crowded, especially in the summer and on the weekends. I really love going out into the middle of nowhere and enjoying the peace and serenity out there. So I would love to have a rig that can take me a lot further into the woods and take me places that I can't tow a trailer. There's also roads that I've encountered on my travels that I really wanna do, but I wanna take the comforts of home with me. So for example, the White Rim Trail down in Canyonlands National Park, you can turn it into a two or three day camping trip and you can do the whole trail, reserve different campsites, and I would absolutely love to have this kind of a truck camper and take it with me on those kind of overlanding trails. So there's actually a lot of reasons that I've been really looking forward to trying out the truck camper. So with that, why did I end up with this 1994 Northern Light that I drove 60 hours for? This is a very unique camper and it is very hard to find. So I was originally looking at lightweight overlanding type truck campers. So your four wheel off-road pop-up campers. But I travel as a solo female with Jasper and Napoleon. So with the pop-up campers, it's fabric along the top 
and I do camp in bear country. So for my own safety with bears and those kind of animals, the canvas really made me nervous for some of the places I go. I also leave Jasper and Napoleon in the base camp when I go out and run errands, when I go on hikes, when I go on tours that they can't go on. So I love having the base camp because it's solid sided and I know they are safe in there. And I really wanted to have that comfort and security in the truck camper as well. If I left Napoleon and Jasper in a truck camper with canvas around the top, I know it's heavy duty canvas, it's held up to a lot, but that still makes me nervous and I really wanted a hard sided unit. If you look at hard sided truck campers that are made today, they weigh a lot. And since this truck camper is kind of an experiment for me and I don't know how much I'm going to actually like it, I didn't want to spend $30,000, $40,000 on a newer rig if I didn't know I was going to keep it. I also love renovation projects, so this worked out for that. I was honestly having a really hard time doing my search because between the pop-up truck campers and then the really heavy truck campers, I was not finding something that met my needs. I really wanted something small, lightweight, but hard-sided. Along the way, in all of that research, I stumbled across the Northern Light 610s. These were built back in the 90s and early 2000s, I believe, and they are a small six-foot bed model. There's no slide-outs, anything like that. This Northern Light weighs 770 pounds dry. That's actually lighter than those four wheel pop-up truck campers that are usually around a thousand pounds dry. So this thing is ridiculously lightweight because it's two fiberglass shells that are put together. It is considered a four season camper. All of the plumbing is inside. So when I put proper heating in here, this thing is going to make an amazing winter rig and it is small. So it doesn't hang off the back end and it's not as tall as a lot of the truck campers they make today. So it is something that when I go out traveling, I'm going to put it on the back of the pickup and I'm actually going to leave it there. It's not something I'm going to load and unload because it's small enough to just stay on the truck and stay with me. They unfortunately don't make these anymore. From what I researched, the factory actually had a fire and the molds for these units burned and they decided it wasn't worth building them again. So once I learned about the Northern Light 610, I knew it was the perfect truck camper for what I wanted but then it was coming down to finding one. So that's why I spent about three months every single day looking at Craigslist, Kijiji, and then different online forums trying to track down one of these units. Finally, one of them popped up. It is in gorgeous condition and he wanted to sell it to somebody that was closer and I was 30 hours away. So I had to do a really quick, really fast trip up to Tofino, British Columbia to pick up this unit. So if you wanna watch that journey, I will post a link to it up here. But it was definitely a needle in a haystack that I was searching for, and I'm very happy that persistence paid off and I was able to find it. I'm gonna renovate it and put some modern amenities in here, such as lithium, solar, a nicer kitchen. I'm gonna paint some of this to make it brighter and lighter in here. And I'm also gonna open up the space a little bit so Jasper can easily get in. There are a few cons to having a unit this small. So first, there's no bathroom at all. So I do have some thoughts on where I can put either a composting, which probably won't fit, or a cassette toilet, and then also a shower. They are not going to be permanent at all, so it is going to be much less comfortable than the wet bath I have in the base camp. The second negative I can see is there is no obvious spot for a litter box, so I'm going to have to get creative so Napoleon can come along. The third negative is this is a tiny bed. So in the base camp, it is almost a king size bed. Napoleon, Jasper, and I, we sprawl out. There is so much room. It is super comfortable. There's a ton of headroom as well. This is a smaller older truck camper so there is not a lot of headroom up here i've spent one night in here so far and i actually had to lay on the bed and talk myself through not getting claustrophobic and being able to sleep so these walls here are actually support i reached out to northern light to talk to them and they do provide support for the shell so i need to figure out a way to give it support but also open this space up a little bit. And the other negative I can see at this point of having the truck camper and the setup I want is Jasper and Napoleon would have to go everywhere with me. So if I'm at a campsite and I need yogurt or milk from the store, they're coming with me when I go to the grocery store. In a way, it's a negative, but also a positive because if I wanna go on a hike, they can stay at the bottom of the trailhead sleeping in the camper while I hike and they'll spend a lot less time alone. 
So it's both a positive and a negative. And I'm not quite sure how they'll do with it, but we're gonna just try it and see how they do. All right, so with that, let me take you on a quick tour of the truck camper because of the immense size. This tour may not actually last very long. So to start, we'll start here in the back of the truck camper. This is the bed. I believe this is a double bed, but it really slopes down in the back, so it gets pretty tight. There are two windows on either side, so there's a little bit of cross ventilation, and then you have the escape hatch over the bed. That is all screened off, so you can actually open it up and get a good amount of ventilation up there. The one thing this truck camper does not have that I will need to add in is some sort of vent in the ceiling. So like a Fantastic or a Max Air fan. So then from the bed, we will make a massive turn here and take you to the fridge. My hand actually hit this wall as I turned around. So over here, you do have the fridge. I plan on moving this. So this fridge will come out. I'm gonna put in an all electric fridge and try to open up this area. I haven't figured out how to do it yet to keep the support but also open up the area. So we'll see. And then over here, you have some extra storage cupboards up here. They're actually a pretty good size. It's pretty impressive how much storage is in here. There might actually be more storage in the base camp, which is pretty crazy. I have learned that Northern Light puts Canada geese on everything. I will honestly say when I first saw their logo on the outside of the truck camper, I thought it was bear claw scratches and I thought it was so cool. It was such a mean logo. It is actually two Canada geese flying. So this is a clock with the two Canada geese. I will probably leave this just for sentiment because it is a Northern Light. The outside decals, I actually think I'm going to eventually remove and put a bear claw decal on just to give it what I thought it was going to have. Over here, we actually have a guest bed, which is pretty amazing for such a small space. So right now the guest bed is maybe four and a half feet long, and then it has an extension out. So if people like to curl up, they can sleep here, or they can kind of stick their feet out at an angle. When I remove this fridge, I'm gonna try to open up this whole bench to make it a six foot long bench that can fold out and make it a more comfortable guest sleeping area. So surprisingly, I would actually have guest quarters in the truck camper, where I don't have that in the base camp. Then back here is the door. It's got the screen on it. Right now, you just push it open, which is not going to work with Jasper. So I'm going to have to find a way to make that a much more secure screen door. So turning over here a little bit, this is a storage cupboard with mirrors. It's actually got a good amount of space in there. Underneath is a heater. I'm actually going to replace this with a much smaller, much more efficient heater. I have a Truma in my base camp. I'm really hoping to get the Truma and put it in here, but the smaller version, because that thing is a champ when it comes to winter camping. Then over here in the kitchen, we do have a vent fan. There's a three burner stove. It has a sink underneath here, and it has storage above, and it has storage below. I am going to make this more of an open area, and then I'm going to put in a smaller stove and then have more counter space overall. I also have a black stone that I'm going to put on a hitch rack on the back of the truck. And I'm hoping to do a lot more outdoor cooking in this rig than before. And then finally we swing around to another closet and more storage right here. So this massive, this is the same size as what I store all my clothes in right now in the base camp. So between the two closets, all of the upper storage, I think I'll have plenty of storage. It's just things like the litter box that I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna put yet. And then down over here, you do have the little window which goes to the back of the truck. So eventually I do wanna replace this window with a larger one. And then if my truck, whatever truck I end up getting, has a sliding window that I can fit through, this would actually be an escape hatch. So I'd be able to escape out the roof, out here, and the back door, just in case of emergency, and I would have a few different options. The other amazing thing about this truck camper is I bought it in Tofino, British Columbia, which is right on the ocean, and the couple that I bought it from had the keys on an old fishing lure. So I love it. That is my keychain now. All right, and that is it. This is my new adventure rig. I have a lot of renovating, a lot of electrical to figure out, new appliances, and the biggest one, I have to find a pickup truck in the craziest pickup truck market that has ever been. So it is definitely going to be a challenge getting this thing ready and on the road, but I will take you guys along on the whole process. So stay tuned. Thank you so much everybody for watching. If you have any questions at all, comment below and I'll see you next time.